Can you sense the calling from Gaia? Gaia's symphony starts with this humble question. For over 30 years, Daphne Sheldrick from Kenya has been taking care of baby elephants whose mothers have been killed by poachers and returning them back to the wilderness. She speaks about the wisdom and compassion of elephants. Shigeo Nozawa from Japan has succeeded to raise a giant tomato tree bearing 15,000 fruits without any genetic manipulation nor special fertilizers. He speaks about the mind of the tomato and her infinite vitality. Reinhold Messner from Italy reached all 14 peaks of 8,000 meter class mountains all by himself without carrying oxygen. Enya from Ireland revives the ancient Celtic spirits in this century through her beautiful healing voice. This is a picture I took of Dave. Russell Schweikart from America an Apollo 9 astronaut shares the touching beauty and the fragility of the Earth as he saw it during his spacewalk. Mother Earth Gaia is itself a giant living creature. And man, animals, grass, trees, water and rocks are all one small part of this huge organism. They live symbiotically in harmony. Gaia Symphony sends this message gently and softly from all over the world. So together, let us listen to the calling from Gaia. There was once a time when people could communicate with flowers, trees, birds, and whales. People knew that their lives were but a small part of a great universe. They revered the sun, respected the moon, inquired of the wind, prayed to fire, were healed by water, and rejoiced with the earth. Then, with remarkable technological progress, we began to consider ourselves masters of the universe, with the rest of nature existing solely for our benefit. We rapidly began to forget the very language that once enabled us to communicate with nature. Will this ability to communicate be lost forever? Or will we find it again as we learn to work in harmony with our newfound progress and technology?
think of being brought up in this area. Mm -hmm. I wasn't aware of all the influence mm -hmm. uh, until I went away from Guidor and I started to live in Dublin. And especially when I started to compose music, I discovered that um, I was uh, using the inspirations and a lot of the scenery and a lot of my time I spent here growing up uh, I started to evolve from the music that I'm composing. So it is very important to me. But again, it's not something that I was very aware of while I was composing. It's only afterwards when I listen to the music, when it's finished, that I can hear all these feelings mm -hmm. through the music. Mm -hmm. In Europe, long before the arrival of Christianity, there lived a group of people who spoke a common Gaelic language. They were called the Celts. The Celts are known to have migrated from the foot of the Himalayas at the end of the Ice Age, and they believed that the divine was incarnated in everything. They revered the sun and the stars, and believed in the existence of a great spirit who bestowed life in all its natural manifestations, in human beings and animals, in trees and grasses, even in rocks and the wind. Driven out by the Germans and Anglo-Saxons, the Celts fled westward until they reached the west end of Europe and settled in Ireland. one particular beach, Maharagalvan. This was the first place mm -hmm. where the people in Guidor used to live, and that's very special to me, because I have it related to one of my songs mm -hmm. on the album Watermark, mm -hmm. On Your Shore. Especially my grandfather, he was a great mm -hmm. storyteller. Mm -hmm. From when I was a very young girl, mm -hmm. I um, would sit and listen to him when he'd come back from school. Mm -hmm. I would wait for him, and oh. then I would um, mm -hmm. go down to his house, mm -hmm. because we lived right beside him, mm -hmm. and I would sit with him, mm -hmm. and he would tell me so many stories. But um, I used to sit and listen, and then I would fall asleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like to see myself as uh, the modern Celtic composer. Mm -hmm. Late in the 1980s, the music of Enya suddenly emerged in Ireland and spread quickly beyond its borders. Enya's music stirred an inexplicable sense of familiarity in the hearts of many. If this sense of familiarity finds its origins in the ancient Celtic spirit, as Enya herself suggests, what was this Celtic spirit? Together with Mayumi Tsuruoka, researcher of Celtic art, we visited sites in Ireland where traces of Celtic culture can still be found. Numerous relics of swirl hieroglyphs engraved on giant stones can be found in places that the ancient Celts revered as sacred sites. For example, the entrance to the remains of Newgrange, which was built around 3200 BC, is protected by a giant stone engraved with three spiral hieroglyphs. The interior of the chamber, 
where some say the souls of kings commune with the universe, was designed such that the sunlight at dawn on the winter solstice enters through a small opening at the entrance, travels down a narrow 30-meter corridor, and into a small chamber far in the back. There, the sunlight comes to rest on three spiral hieroglyphs engraved in the stone. ケルト的な思考っていうのは一見渦巻きのようにね遠回りで全く瞬間にこう湾曲するわけですから前が見えないわけですねでその見えない先にねまた一歩踏み出してさらにまた見えない壁とか闇とか森とかが前に来るしか